Good morning. I am Shirley Ann Gardner, wife of Adrian Gardner, and mother of three wonderful children, Angela, Paul, and Murray. And then I have six wonderful, beautiful grandchildren who I absolutely adore. We have Charles, who's married to Angela. We have Abigail, married to Paul. And finally, Murray's wife, Bridget. These are the people I live for. I'm very proud to be the matriarch of the Gardner clan. Adrian, I was very happy to meet him in Cape Town. I was busy nursing, that was my career. And I happened to meet him at a 21st birthday party and we seemed attracted to each other straight away. That was the end of story. We were together from then. But I had to go overseas with my cousin for six months. And when I came back, Adrian was still waiting for me. And all he wanted to do was get married. <laughs> I hardly had my feet firmly on the ground. And he whisked me off and said, time to get a ring. So off we went. There was no proposal. You know, Adrian is he's a very impetuous sort of guy and that's all he wanted to do. And we got the ring and much to my mom's horror, he said, well, I want to be married in three months time. <laughs> and they had a little argument, but of course, Adrian won the argument. And we were married from our home in Claremont, Cape Town. At that stage, he was working for a spa head office. And um, I was continuing with my nursing. And we built a little house for ourselves in Roseland Road, Rondebosch. And we were just settling in when Adrian had been looking for a job in Cape Town, but he couldn't find anything that satisfied him. And he got a call from a gentleman, Bruce Mac Williams, who lived in Port Elizabeth. And he had a wholesaling a grocery business and he wanted Adrian to become his accountant. So Adrian, who loves adventure and uh, decided, well, up sticks and off we go to Port Elizabeth. And he dragged me there, kicking and screaming, the last place on earth I wanted. I loved my Cape Town. So anyway, he packed up and moved ahead of me to go and look for a home. And my mom and my dog, Blotto, <laughs> we crammed ourselves into my little mini and off we drove to Port Elizabeth, finally. Um, he'd found a home for us. We soon settled in. I was pregnant with Angela at the time. And uh, we settled in there and uh, carried on with our lives. Port Elizabeth being the friendly city, I soon met some lovely people and of course through Adrian's business and we moved house at that stage uh, to a beautiful place in the Barkins Valley with the, the Barkins River running through and we settled there for at least 18 years. Adrian always planned to become his own boss. After working in the corporate business for, for a while, he decided, no, it's time now for me to go on my own. So he started off with penguin pools, believe it or not. Had to learn right from the scratch about swimming pools. And then he started a couple of other companies and it just grew and grew. But sadly, we, uh, he got a bit beyond himself and Everything turned upside down in, and he virtually lost everything and had to start again. But the resilient person he is and the positive person he is, he packed up and he came and he uh, uh, sat in our bedroom, made his office in our bedroom and started working at his business again. And it wasn't long before he was up and running. Then he met a, a, a friend who was very keen on the horse game and we'd, we'd never dealt with horses in our lives before. Anyway, Tony Ross persuaded him that he, we must start breeding horses. 
and it wasn't long before he bought a plot in uh, a Plettenberg Bay. And Adrian and I traveled to Kentucky to look at various angles of, of, of how to run a stud and checked out all their beautiful stables and what have you. And uh, with his vision, he came back and he built the most exquisite uh, stud farm. One day, somebody came up to him and said, we want to buy this farm and offered him a price. And Adrian looked at this and thought about it. And he said, right, that's the end of the horse game. At that stage, there was a lot of horse flu around and uh, uh, the racing was in the doldrums. So we thought it was a good idea to get out at that stage. So with that, He's always loved Africa. He was born in Zimbabwe and brought up on a, on a cattle ranch where he spent many year, years in the bush with his dad. And um, so he fancied to have a patch of Africa of his own. And he looked around Zim and he just couldn't find the most suitable place. So we came back, he came back and uh, to South Africa and then one day, out of the blue, we were at a cricket match and a friend of him told him that he had a piece of Africa for Adrian. It was a little hunting lodge near Alistair. And we went and had a look at it. It was pretty decrepit. But of course, Adrian, with his vision, he saw something there and got the builders in and we improved it. And that became a family retreat for quite a few years. There was a drought at the time, quite a severe drought. And so Adrian thought, well, I think it's time to, uh, you know, to spread our wings a bit and become maybe commercial. So anyway, he bought up three or four pieces of land. And then one of the plots that we spied had this beautiful manor house on it. Uh, from the 1930s and he thought this was a splendid place but it was so run down full of rats and broken windows and it's very shabby and I said to him are you mad what on earth do you want to buy this old ramshackle place for? anyway he has he's incredible he's got such an eye for architecture and stuff and he uh, said no I can make something out of this and sure enough, the builders were called in and in no time, this beautiful manor house was uh, turned into the, as the splendid place it is today. So once um, the uh, manor house was completed, we started to look at the other old derelict houses and Adrian decided it was time to renovate them as well. They were an absolute mess. They were just, it was just brick and mortar and a, and a f broken down place. And uh, so he built those up into very nice lodges all over uh, our reserve. About 25,000 hectare we had at that stage. And then we also had to bring the animals in. But prior to that, we had to have a name for the reserve. So Adrian came up with the name Shamwari. Being a Zimbabwean, that was a very common word used for my friend. Coming from the friendly city, this was very appropriate for us. And so that was, that was the story of Shamwari, the beginning. So that was our first start to the life of conservation. At Shamwari, in the Causa and 1820 British settler country of the Eastern Cape province, rhinos form the focal point of safaris, underscoring the vital role played by private game ranchers. We believe that the future of these two animals lies with the private reserve. If we take the examples of what has happened north of us and we see what happened in the public parks, where thousands of these animals once roamed and are now completely extinct. It surely is 
the responsibility of us private owners to ensure that these species do survive. Our success will be determined by their survival. We were very fortuitous that we happened to meet Dr. Ian Player and he, he was an incredible man. He, uh, he was like a brother to Adrian. They were both Pisces, um, got on very, very well and understood each other. From there, we did travel overseas a bit to get some experience uh, talking to travel agents uh, because we were pretty green at that stage and didn't know how we were going to get people to come and visit this, this uh, beautiful place. Through our extensive travels, we have met some amazing people, mainly in conservation and a few celebs on the way, which has been quite exciting. And of course, Virginia McKenna of Born Free and her dear son, Will, and they've, they've done wonderful work for conservation, saving cats from awful situations. And we've become very close friends. And of course, that was the start of our journey in tourism and conservation. I love poetry. I'd like to read you one of mine, which was round the, about the time of lockdown and I was on the beach. I called it, what a beautiful day. This morning, I stared out at our bright blue bay and as I pondered, I felt all was okay. I exited our home and went for a walk. It was fresh sea air and peace that I sought. Not a breath of wind, just quiet chatter all along the way. I knew this was going to be a very good day. There was an aura of peace and just crashing of waves and smiles and greetings, all trying to be brave. The sun beat down on my skin. I felt all was okay. And so blessed to live in this wonderful day. A friend or two stopped me for a chat and even dogs on their leashes approached for a pet. I took all this in, thought what a wonderful world, while this ghastly virus has slowly unfurled. Our lives must go on, simple things we must do. Pray for the sick and the dying, we must get through. So to my family, friends, and our country and all, let's stand together and fight this curved ball. Be kind, be helpful, and stick to your faith. We'll get rid of the scourge, then all will be safe. Let's nurture our planet, as sick as it is. Not get in a panic or get in a tiz. For nature is wonderful and will heal itself. And we will all benefit, and so will our health. So finally, I just want to say to my dear husband, Adrian, I love him very much. He has been such a pillar of strength to our family. He's encouraged our children and our grandchildren to love animals and conservation. He is an amazing example to all his staff. He's a compassionate, very generous man and he's always there for the underdog, people who are suffering or in some way or another. It's been a, an amazing journey. And let it not end here. <laughs> let's hope we, st I know we're in our twilight years, but let's hope we have a few more together and a few more adventures together. Enjoy life. I know we're in very difficult times at the moment with this virus but he has remained as positive as he can uh, and that's the man he is. He will never give up. <laughs>